Alright, here we go. We're going to discuss more advanced features of object placement, but first, before you do anything else, you're going to want to save your map. So go to File, Save As, and then save it. There you go. Um, you want to make sure when you save it that it's in the Dawn of War 2 Assets Maps PvP folder, um, just for sake of having to do it later on. Um, also make sure your scenario has a name, so go to Scenario, Scenario Properties, call it something. Um, and there we go, let's get back to editing our map. So we'll, um, I'll talk about height of objects uh, to begin with. There's two ways of editing the height of an object. Um, two main ways, there's an easy way and there's a hard way. Um, you can avoid the hard way for the majority of the time, uh, but sometime you're going to have to come across it and you're going to have to do it, but I'll explain that later. Um, so let's get doing. Um, well first of all, I'll show you the easy way. We've basically got this tank trap here. Um, just sitting around, don't do much. So let's hold down the H key when it's got it selected and then drag up and down and you can alter the height of the tank trap. So let's place it upon this bunker and there we go. We've got a uh, bunker with a tank trap on it. And like I said, it's very quick, very easy to use. Um, provides a nice ability to customise your map. Um, you can't do it with some objects. Like I mentioned, you're going to have to do the hard way for it, like this barbed wire. Simply, it will not budge. Um, you can do it for some buildings. Uh, such as a guard tower, you can go up and down. Uh, very, very nice. And that's basically height. Um, I'll just give you another example. Let's get this uh, crate. Uh, move it over here. Raise this height a bit and put it on top of the bunker. Um, you can see this little um, grey mesh down here. You want to use that as a guide. Um, basically, when you can't see the bottom of it anymore, it means the object is intersecting with the other object. So you want to um, just move it around a little bit until you can just see it and there you go if you pan yep that's exactly on top of the bunker so there we go and that's basically heights um i'll move on to spleens now as many people have requested me to do that because they don't understand it um so click on spleen placement up top and let's place a road to begin with so click texture then scroll down to the bottom and find a road texture to use and um, we'll go to nb roads and let's go to let's preview a couple um Ancient Cobble, yeah, that looked good on this map. Uh, which one? Um, there, that one will do for now. Um, so once you've got your texture selected, you can right-click on the map and place spleen uh, waypoints. Um, if you're unhappy with it at any time, you simply press escape and it will delete it for you. But let's uh, place one. So right-click uh, anywhere on the map where you want the spleen. We're going to have a little road running through the debris to the opponent's base around this point. There we go, around this crater, past this barrel or whatever it is in front of the turret. And then uh, once you've got it lined up, you don't have to be that accurate, it will automatically uh, bend and curve for you. Simply press the enter key, and there you go. You've got a uh, very patchy, very rubbish looking road <laughs> running through your map now. Um, it does get better, just use better textures, have a play around of it. Um, it's messed up a little bit there, but I didn't spend that much time putting my effort into it, so uh, what can I expect? Um, you can also do this for walls, um, for example, if you want a huge circular wall around your map to prevent players from getting out, you can go to, scroll up to the uh, top, deselect texture as the default, um, click object, and wait for that to load. Um, you'll recognise part of the range system over here now, because it's exactly the same as what you've been using to place all these other objects. Um, let's go to EBPS world objects. Scroll down, uh, let's go to Urban Objects, Walls, HM Rule, and um, we'll be using a ring of HM Rule around the map. So, simply uh, once you've selected that, you want to scroll up a little bit, click Add Object to List, Align Wall Mode, uh, drag yourself up again, make Object Default, and then you can place those little uh, waypoints on the map once more. So let's place them around the map in a kind of oval shape, very quickly, very rough, just to give you an idea. Press enter key, and there you go. Didn't quite join it up to that end, so it doesn't really matter, you get the idea. Um, let's see how many they placed. They placed 43 for us in the space of a couple of seconds, which you, as you can imagine, if you had to do this hand uh, by hand, it would take you absolutely ages, uh, rotating each one of them to be in perfect alignment that they've done. Um, spend more time on it, make the waypoints closer together, you'll get better results. Um, 
and yeah, have a couple of play around. There's loads of things to choose from in the spleens. It's really, really fun and easy to do, and provides great results. So uh, let's leave it like that as it is, and um, I'm going to talk quickly about impossible terrain, seeing as I now want this outside area to not be accessible to play people playing the map. So you're going to click the traffic light symbol up here, and uh, it will turn the overlay on over here automatically of impossible terrain. You can turn that on and off if you want. It's easy to have it on when you're placing it, obviously. So uh, let's increase the brush size and simply left click, and it will fill in the areas where you don't want units to go. And they can't jump into this, they can't teleport, they are basically stuck, they can't do a thing. They have to uh, remain in this area here. Um, yeah, you get the idea, I'll go around the entire map. Yeah, and you can do that now. Um, I mentioned earlier that I made the map size 320 by 320, um, but I only put the pale area to 288 by 288. Um, this allows me a little bit of leeway on the sides. You can see here there's impassable redness here, um, solid redness, which means you can't even edit it. You can't remove it. If you hold down right click, you can move what you have put down already, but you can't move that. Um, this means I can create cliff effects or more walls or place objects here just to give the map some effect on the outskirts so when the player pans around they can't see the endless abyss of the map creator world um, yeah so very useful uh, tip just to give you there um, I'll quickly go on to height maps and water now seeing as they're very related to impassable terrain as well um, water is generally impassable unless you set it so you go to height map and um, I put it over here. As you can see, the presets you can have deep water over the head, ankle height water. Uh, we're going to keep on very deep water at the moment, just as uh, for me to give you the example. Um, as you may remember earlier as well, I set my height of the map to 100. So if I click 100 again, and if I change the left mouse button mode to set value um, and left click, it won't do a thing on the map. It will uh, have the working cursor, but it's not actually doing anything. It's simply reassigning the train that's already there to the same height that it is at. So if I change it to 90, for example, and then hold down left click, it will create a little chasm over here. Um, let's put one down over here as well. There we go, just very rough. Give you a general idea. Um, actually, not so rough, I don't want to look that messy. There we go, that'll do. Uh, just move that container in a bit. And then um, something you can do when you've uh, done a fair bit of work like that, you can't be bothered going around it uh, smoothing manually, and because it doesn't really matter that much, it's not vital for your map. You can click Smooth Train here, um, click OK, OK, and it'll do it for you, making it look a lot better than those jagged edges. Um, this also removes a lot of detail from the amount of height maps you've just done. So if you I'd only recommend using the smooth terrain feature at the beginning of creating a map rather than at the end. Otherwise you're gonna lose a lot of what you've done. Um and it may make the terrain look completely different from what you've originally tended to do. Um the same kind of thing can be said about optimized terrain, it simply removes unnecessary little bits of a uh, high map that you don't need. Um but once again it, it as I said it removes them so if you're trying to make something very detailed, it's a bad idea. But anyway, so we've got two pits either side of the map now. Um, what we're going to do is fill them with water, so get the water placement tool, and then if you let right click, um, it will simply place some water two meters above wherever you've uh, clicked. And uh, as this is at 90, as this pit went down to 90 meters, it placed it at 92. If you place it on the map, it'll flood the map, so we don't want to do that. Um, if you, you can change it here, so if you set it to 99, it'll go up to the uh, top. If you set it to 101, it'll flood the map once more. So you want to keep it below 100, but above 90, so let's set it to 97. And the same can be said for the other one. So let's right click again here, and this one is set to 92, so let's set it to 98. There we go. Very easy effects. Um, and that's basically water placement in a nutshell. I'll go into um, more detail about water, about how to make waves, how to do wind direction, how to make it more bumpy, um, reflections as you can see there, you can change it, you can check the, change the style of the water, you can change the colour, you can do lots of things with it, um, but they're more advanced details and I'll do them later for you. Um, yeah, so I'll show you other quick things, you can mess around with objects now. Um, one thing I've recently found out is uh, if you go back to object placement, you can set the health of objects. 
for example, this bunker over here, if we just take the, just get rid of the crates of it so you can see better. Just get rid of them. Uh, you can set the health of the bunker, the initial uh, health. So you select the bunker like that. You go to current and you go to edit state, and then you can click add, and then add a state command, and the only one available is set health. So you click OK, you double click on that, and uh, you basically get a percentage of the health you want the building to be at when it's first spawned on the map. Um, so uh, here it's at minus 10%, I believe that is. Um, or no, that's minus 1%. So if you go to plus 1% and apply, the building will suddenly crack and become a full of craters and holes. If you put it to minus 1%, it will just collapse and it will start the game by collapsing <laughs> and uh, you'll just be left with a ruin there. So let's leave it at a fairly demolished state. So if we change it to 31%, uh, let's change it a bit more. There you go, you see there's still some damage done to the building, there's still a couple of cracks and dents in it, but um, it's, got f it's still got a reasonable amount of its health left. Uh, smoking a bit more from the uh, damage done to it, but there we go. Very nice. And uh, anything else I can think of? Um, nope, I think that's it. Um, that concludes basically object placement around the map. You know everything that you uh, basically need to know. There are a few more things, but they're more advanced details, which I'll come into later. So, um, yep, that's everything you need to know to uh, place objects on the map. And uh, I'll cover more detailed and more advanced features in the next couple of sessions. So I'll see you in a couple of seconds.